inevitability as a pet owner is that you know one day you're going to lose your pet. And unfortunately, this past Saturday, that cycle of life came for one of my dogs and Martini passed away at 10 years old. And any pet owner will tell you this, losing a pet is an emotional equivalent of like losing your family member because your pets do sometimes become part of your family. And I got to tell you, this week it hit us hard, man. I mean, you truly don't cherish your pet until they're actually gone. And, you know, coping with the loss... It's also challenging for each person because we all cope with our grief in our own independent ways. There's no right or wrong way to cope with the initial grief, but anyone will tell you it's just going to take a little bit of time. You know, I, I raised my dogs since they were puppies. I trained both of my Shibas knowing this is a difficult breed to train because they are just so damn stubborn. And Martini was the prototype Shiba Inu. She was stubborn. She was aloof independent, but at the same time, she was loyal and loving of her owners, and she would always try to protect us from strangers. So you might call her over, call her name, come over here, you want scratches, no, nope, wouldn't care, but if there was someone that she didn't trust, she was the first person to jump in front of you because her whole point was she was going to protect her owner because she's that loyal. And typically with dogs, they like to choose their family member which they're going to attach to the most. Sometimes it's the kid in the house who plays with them the most. Most of the time, it's going to be the person who feeds them and walks them every day. And our Sheepers are actually no different. Bacardi has always been a mama's boy. And he will sit by his mom's side all day long, whether it's watching TV, taking a nap, lounging around. He's your total mama's boy. Martini, on the other hand, she always preferred me. Every night, no matter where we lived, she was always by my side when I played video games, whether it was in my condo, on my couch, at my family's place, when I was waiting for my house to get built for that one year, and even now, in my own home. Whenever the PlayStation was on, she was by my side, sleeping and keeping me company every single time. So when you guys watch my video, pretty much every time you see a video, I would say 95% of the time, she was right there next to me when I was playing the footage that you guys were seeing on the screen. I was her favorite human which makes it even harder for me personally because she was pretty much my partner in crime at all times. Now, since the day that we got her, she has had minor health issues almost her entire life. As a puppy, she came to us with a rash that needed to be treated. Then after we spayed her, one of the side effects that you get from fixed female dogs is incontinence. It's, it's their inability to control their bladder fully so she could pee on herself without even realizing it. She also had crystals in her urine, which meant that she needed a special diet. Also along the way, we know that she suffered two known seizures with me about five or seven years ago each. They were minor. She recovered. But those were only two known ones. She could have had all these unknown ones that we didn't know about. But I know of two seizures personally. But 2018, this was such a rough year for her. Around February, she suffered what we initially thought was another seizure. It usually takes her like a good hour or so to recover. But this time, she wasn't bouncing back like she normally does. So we brought her to the vet treated her for what we thought was a strong seizure only for her to suffer an actual another seizure that night similar to what we had seen before the minor seizures where it only takes her about an hour to recover eventually she recovered from all this we placed her on some medications and it appeared that she was going to be on her way to a normal life a fully functioning normal life but in may she suffered something even more severe and then we treated her and it turned out that that was a stroke and it was a really strong stroke. It was actually preventing her from walking straight. She was actually just turning in circles every time that she tried to walk. She struggled to carry her own weight. She struggled to hold her bladder even more. And again, more meds, more time. And in addition, the doctors noticed that her thyroid levels weren't normal, which is probably what led to all these series of events that was happening to her body. The initial seizure that we thought, the one that we saw, and we were like, wow, she's taking a little bit extra time to recover from. That was most likely a smaller stroke, and we just didn't diagnose it correctly because we thought it was initially a seizure. So with a history now of seizures, strokes, thyroid disease, incontinence, and crystals, she has fought off so damn much. And not to mention, she always hid the pain or discomfort. She, she doesn't whine, she didn't cry, and, and any time she was in pain, she typically tried to hide her conditions until they were actually severe, which led to the final week of July. She was getting better from the stroke. She, she was on the verge of having the full recovery. I mean, she was being taken off of the strong epilepsy drug that we had her on. We got her bladder under control. Her thyroid levels were regulated. But we noticed that she wasn't fully herself. She started rejecting some food. She was vomiting. So we scheduled a vet visit for her. 
and it was going to be on Saturday. But we noticed by Saturday morning that she was actually struggling to breathe. So naturally, I raced her to the emergency vet. Tests revealed that she had a ruptured gallbladder. And even with surgery, she was given a 10% chance to survive. However, she's been an amazingly resilient dog. So to me, that was better than having to say, okay, she has a 0% chance. So I said, you know what? I have to try and save her life. I okayed the surgery. At the same time, my better half was also going to the hospital the next day for a procedure. So now, both females of the house are in hospital. So hence, the last video that I posted was me saying I'm going to take some time off because I had a human in the hospital and the dog go in the hospital. Human recovered. My dog, not so much. Martini initially survived the surgery, which they didn't think she would initially. She survived the next two, three days in the hospital when her body was adjusting to life without a gallbladder. Again, they didn't think she would survive that because the damage that the bile did in her body actually did significant damage to some of the other organs. Between going to the vet and the hospital last week, it, it was trying to spend as much time with both of them that I could. Martini improved pretty much every day. And while the vets initially thought that maybe it was going to be a two to four day recovery period, it ended up being a little bit more than that because, again, she's an older dog with some more health issues. She ended up needing blood transfusion, platelets. She needed constant around-the-clock attention just to survive, but it looks like she was going to make it. The problem was that she wasn't recovering as quickly, and she was still regurgitating food and rejecting food at the same time. So Friday night, last Friday, a week ago from today, we visited her, and the vet gave us some optimistic news that by Saturday, if she passed all her tests, we were going to take her home with a recovery plan. So Friday night, we went to see her, and that ended up being the last time that I saw her alive. Even though she was still being stubborn, as you would expect from a Sheba, she didn't even want to be at the vet. She was trying to push her way out of the kennel, even with all these tubes and wires in her, because she wanted to come home with us. She didn't want to stay there one more night. She wanted us to take her with her. But... We knew that she needed one more day at the vet. She just wasn't healthy enough for us to take care of her just at that point. Saturday morning came, which was pretty much a week after her surgery, and the vet noticed a little bit of cloudy mucus coming out of her. So they wanted to run some initial tests because they said everything else looked normal, but that cloudy mucus just doesn't sit with them right. They also noticed that she sort of started to regress in how well she was doing Friday night. So they ended up doing an ultrasound, and they saw that her pancreas was failing. So after all that she had been through, after everything that she survived up to this point, it was her pancreas that gave out on her. It wasn't her heart, it wasn't her spirit, but it was something, again, that she just couldn't control. So the vet did everything they could to save her, but unfortunately at that point it was just too late. They did CPR. Um, surgery wasn't going to be an option because she had just went through one major surgery, so unfortunately it wasn't meant to be. So she passed away on August 4th after a week-long battle trying to survive a very difficult surgery. And this was after a year-long battle with her nervous system and pretty much a lifelong battle of just never being healthy. And, and what made her passing so much harder to cope with and still makes it difficult to this day was the fact that she was about to come home. We were so sure we were going to pick her up, bring her home that day, but her health took a turn for horrible and we ended up losing her. Now, for some people who don't have pets... And you don't get the appeal of why owners do things for their pets. You know, that's usually for people that might either have kids or, or they're just not animal people, which is fine. For people who don't have kids like myself, their pets will sometimes fill that void. You know, we, we don't have children, so our pets sort of become our children. They're not exactly children, but it fills that particular part of our life that we don't have. So yes, we do treat them as pets. I don't dress the motherfuckers up or some shit like that like some other people do. They don't sit in strollers. Hell no, they don't do, we don't do any of that crap with them. But our schedule, our routine, revolves around their dogs, like walking them and feeding them and giving them attention and playing with them and exercising them. You know, when we think about vacations, we think about who's going to be the one that takes care of them or trips. Can we take them on our trip or do we have to go without them? This is common for pet owners and, and pet owners in my same circumstance understand the logic that I just regarded and they get that mentality towards your pet. Now, others might not. You might not understand that. And look, there's nothing wrong with that. That's fine. But pets do become part of your family if you let them. So when it comes to saying goodbye, it's just not an easy process. And saying goodbye is never easy, especially when you know that life took them away from you a little bit earlier than you expected. So in her memory, for those of you who have your pets, whether it's a dog, a cat, goldfish, whatever you have, hug your pet today. Because you never know when that day will come. Appreciate the time that you have with your pet 
and cherish the time that you have with them because you know an inevitability of being a pet owner is one day they're not always going to be by your side. Now, next week, I'll be back to my usual videos. Obviously, this has been a difficult two weeks for me, but I will be getting back to my usual video game coverage. So as always, rate, comment, subscribe, and all that good shit, and I'll see you guys next week when I restart all my video game videos that I normally do for you guys.